Well hi guys and girls, welcome back to the spare room, it's Emma again. Welcome to part 10 of this little dynamo build. So far we've got the armature in and spinning, the magnet done and the cast base done and the bearings done. I've got a piece of copper bar there and I'm going to make an, uh, a commutator out of there to go on here. This is 22mm copper bar and tube would probably have been a smarter idea in hindsight but this is what we've got and we're going to bore him and part a piece off to make a piece of tube. So I've got a copper bush there, which looks good. Copper's rotten stuff really to turn and it needs some lubrication. But that's right through to a nice parallel copper bush, that's a good start. So there we go. First idea was to make some little step collars like this and solder them against a step in the end just to key into the epoxy that was yeah it's not going to work so mostly because we've got these big bearing surfaces on here and it's going to short out so that's not really the answer I think the best thing we can do and I've bored that just as a cylinder Probably the best thing we can do is drill this and put four, four holes in it and rivet four little... We'll put this on a James Green pad here. Make four little rivets. These are a bit oversized, but something that looks something like this to go through the copper tube and rivet on the outside and they'll key into the epoxy nicely and they're not going to worry as far as conductivity goes and they're not going to be in the way so what I'm going to do is make up four of those something probably five or six millimeters diameter and to go in a hole that's we might even drill these holes in here first and make them fit in the holes give them a bit of a countersink on the outside and rivet them over and we might silver solder them in so they don't move and if we ever have to polish up this commutator on the outside then we're not going to worry anything so that's where we go I've got a bit of brass rod we might make up just turn something up put a groove in them with a parting tool machine the other end down and part them off. I reckon we probably need eight of them. We've got. We have a look. Two shells with a split in each side. And if we put two in here, one in each end. that looks like it's going to work and then we can split them afterwards and we might make a two part mould basically a piece of aluminium to go in the end here to, to hold it all together and a tube to go over the outside and pour in with epoxy so that's the plan let's get in and do it So I guess the next thing is to mark this and I've I blued it up so it's easy to look, easy to see and taken a, a trick that Bruce Whitton in Western Australia has shown us and just used a ruler and pushed it between the scriber and the and adjusted it so that the ruler is nice and vertical and that should be the centre. These little clamps I use all the time. I think they're fantastic. I'm 
and I figured if we got a piece of tool steel and sat there we could turn this around until that scribe line matches up with the edge of it and mark them again that might give us a fairly even line for putting our, our pegs So that's four of those, and I've just drilled these with a sander, a sander drill so they've got a little bit of a countersink on one end, on the outside. And hopefully without too much trouble we should be able to thread these through the little hole, sit them on a piece of bar and rivet them over, and there should be more than and six millimeters through the middle so they don't touch the shaft and they should make good keys for, for the epoxy so next job is to rivet them up So these are riveted in here and I've set them up here with a little bit of baker solder and flux I'm just going to soft solder them. That way when we polish the outside we're not going to clean off the, the, the hole of the rivet and they're not going to fall off or, or come loose. There's probably way too much solder. But they're in there nice and firm and they aren't going to come off. So they're all soldered up and cleaned up a bit. That's what I've got. I filed them off so that they're, the pieces that were sticking out in the middle just don't quite touch there. And that goes sort of on there probably quite a bit shorter by the time it's finished and full of epoxy in the middle and boiled out so we finished with this part which is the aluminium spacer that we use to mark the end bearings what I'm going to do is bore that out so that that tube or so that the bar fits in there nicely and sit them in. I'm probably going to find another piece of aluminium or something to go on the inside to give this a little bit of a mask back here and to hold it all together and we should have something that's ready to cast. So that's what I made up is just a mould. Have a look at these We sit them in here. Make sure that's all set home with the equal gap on each side. And that's probably ready to pour, I think. That should give us a 
pretty good little armature I hope. So the biggest job here is going to be finding something clean to, to mix it in and to measure the equal parts. This can be mixed by weight and part B is 90 90 grams to 100 grams we've got 9 grams of part A like that it's only 8 that's 9 Sorry, we need 10, don't we? That's 10 grams of part A. And in the other cup, 9 grams of part B. There we go. And a plastic spoon to mix them together. Found a bit of dough there. According to the sheet, we've only got about 15 minutes work time, so we want to be pretty quick about this, I think. And we'll give that 15 minutes and wait for it to set. It's supposed to dry clear. We will see about that. I mixed up a little bit more than we need. And I was going to grout the magnets in with this as well. And probably the bearings. But I think we'll leave that until next time round. And everything's ready to go. I think that's just starting to release there. It's starting to harden up there. So my friend Adam, so I said, how are you going to demold it? And it's an excellent question, but that part of the mold's come out okay. I'm not sure about knocking that out of there. Probably it shouldn't be very difficult to move if we turn this upside down. Hopefully, it'll tap out without coming too close. Probably, I think we need to use that piece of copper as a punch and put him in the vise and give him a few taps. Anyway, the manual says that that's probably going to take five, seven days at ambient temperature to cure properly, and I really want to do that before I machine it anymore. So we're going to call this video done and make it part one of the commutator build, and we'll get on and make some other bits during the week, and next weekend I'll come back to this and... I'll mount him on the shaft and get him right. 
So thanks for watching guys, more soon, and don't forget to like and subscribe and all that stuff.